Hi, good evening all. Well, the quest for 500 continues. Yeah, I know we got our 82nd point, but it's almost funny. Guys, <laughs> I think they're going to lose in regulation next game, and I'm going to call it right on this year. How many times have I said this team looks like they're headed to an 82-point season? Oh, my God. Anyway, <laughs> it's almost comical. Uh, it didn't really bug me. The boys lost this game. They played decent, I guess you could say, you know, in this game. They put up some fight. But my God, the, the Toronto game infuriated me, guys. Infuriated me. Here's here the, the bad news is Detroit stays alive. And if Toronto would have won in regulation, Detroit was done. Done. Toronto has a power play with like a little over two minutes left in the three minutes left in the game about. Of course they screw it up. And then Detroit gets a penalty and, and they wound up winning in overtime. It's like you know, the, the Toronto, put it this way, the good news for us, though, with that is Toronto's getting ready to do their annual choke job. Okay, let's look at the numbers. Shots on goal, 42-29 for Florida, and UPL was stellar in nets, I thought. He played a really good game. They dominate on the faceoff, 64% to 36. Uh, they are 0 for 3 in the power play. The Sabres 1 for 2. They had 25 hits in the game. The Sabres had 18. And why I say the Sabres fought hard, here it is here. 25 blocks for the Sabres, 6 for the uh, the Cats, basically. It's a, it's a one-sided affair there. But they, they came with their A game, I thought, Florida, in this one. 13 giveaways apiece, 10 takeaways for the Sabres. And 9 for Florida. Shots and go per period. 13, 8 in the first. And 14, uh, for Florida, 14-11 for the Sabres in the second. All Florida in the third, 16-6. The Sabres came on a bit during maybe, I'd say, the last five minutes. In the overtime, the Sabres had a shot, and they had two for that 42-29 total. Scoring. Jost gets his third of the year from Dali and Yokiharu at the 259 mark of the first, and it starts good. Very soon after... Lundell from Kachuk and Cousins at the 502 mark ties it one to one. Then Stenland unassisted, shorthanded at 811, makes it two to one Florida. And Quinn on the power play from Byram and Power ties it up 2 2. And that's after the first period. We head to overtime, and that's where it ended. So all the goals in the first 10 minutes of this game. And then overtime, and that was it. 358, Reinhardt from Barkov. Yeah, Reinhardt with his career high 55th goal. What a season for Sam over there. 3 2 final. So that's it. The Sabres lose this one in extra time. Seems like every time they play Florida, they lose a tight one, eh? But I'm still fuming about the Detroit Toronto game. My goodness. Like, Toronto, the way I'm seeing this, guys, I'm going to talk about the Sabres in a sec because I'm still fuming about this, is Toronto can't put teams away. They just can't, you know? They had a chance tonight to get that playoff thing going and say, listen, we can eliminate these guys right now. They don't have the guts. Toronto just doesn't have the guts to get it done. You could tell. Standing around watching Detroit in the end, it's like, wow, Toronto, wow. Toronto lets Detroit come out, take a 4-1 to one lead early in that game. Ridiculous. Then they storm back just to blow it. <laughs> but anyway, that's the good news is Toronto's getting ready to uh, do their uh, annual uh, choke. So the boys lose this in the extra period. And now we are 82 points after 81 games. If we lose in regulation tomorrow, we're, we finish a very comical 82 points in 82 games. <laughs> if they do this, well, uh, if they do this, uh, uh, not tomorrow, next game. <laughs> God, I, there, there's a funny flip side to it now, you know, now that the season's done. You know, they, these stupid interviews before the game, who's playing, who's not. Like, why do you think we care, Granado? We want to hear that this was an unacceptable season. We, you know, that's what we want to hear as fans. We want to hear some 
emotion. We want to hear some passion. We don't want to hear about, well, he might be playing today. We're not sure. Ugh. I'm just checking Pittsburgh. Boston on the power play, 16 minutes left. They're up 4-2 in the third. Not good. But the good news is Detroit uh, will not get in the playoffs if they finish tied. And the last game of the year is Philly at Washington. Somebody is going to at least get two more points. If Montreal can beat them next game, that does Detroit in. Detroit cannot lose in regulation now, or they're mathematically eliminated immediately. So I really have my hopes up. <laughs> I even I shouldn't have watched it, you know? But anyway, I just finished watching the Sabres lose, so I figured, what the hell? Maybe I'll get lucky with this one, but no. So tonight, hey, uh, there was there was some there was some fight in the Sabres today, I'd say, but it is what it is. They were making stupid passes, I thought, at certain points and you know, this thing about um, high risk in our own zone drives me crazy, guys. It's one of those things we've got to fix in the offseason, really. Just one of those things. I don't know. Get a new voice. You know, I, I hate saying it over and over. Get a new voice behind the bench. I'm sick and tired of this. You know, if I got to watch uh, Ellis and uh, well, I forget the Hobbit's name, the other coach on the Sabres. He looks about four foot two. I mean, if we got, if I got to watch these coaches another year, I'm gonna go nuts, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna lose my mind. I can't watch these guys. I can't. I don't even like looking at them. I've never felt that way eh, about a Sabres staff. I was thinking about that. I never have felt that way as a Sabres fan ever, ever. That's how I feel about this staff. I can't even look at them. It, get, it aggravates me. I see Granado giving an interview. It aggravates me. This is the point I'm at now with this team. So I, I really hope, guys, you know, let's just get the other, this game out of the way and be done with this damn season once and for all. And we'll watch the other half of the league who made the playoffs, see who winds up winning the Stanley Cup. I'm going to call Colorado. They lost 7-0 tonight. They're my pick to win the Stanley Cup this year. I'm picking Colorado to win it. Still, I'm sticking with that pick. They have no shot at um, being like first and first overall, or but I just feel right about them, and I think they're going to beat the Bruins in the finals. That's kind of who I'm picking. I think um, if Swayman gets rolling over there and Elmark maybe holds up in the playoffs, we'll see. It's just Boston only have 18 regulation losses all year, and they're very quietly are a forgotten team. And if you look at them, the last two seasons combined, they have 30 regulation losses. This team could break through still. Boston could break through. They've got the personnel to do it. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, tell you the truth, I thought they were going to, uh, Bergeron was going to come out of retirement, uh, you know, just a few, uh, about a month and a half before the season ended. I thought he was going to come out of retirement, but it didn't happen. I really did think he was going to. And uh, just be part of the run, you know? So, all right, guys, I'm leaving it there. I got to go upstairs. I got to get back at it. My deadline has been extended to Monday. So that's good news because I'm tired and I'm doing something in the day and then I'm back here and I'm up there and it's like, it's, it's a lot. So I've got to go up there and do a few things tonight. And uh, I'm down to one room, thank God. I'm so fed up with this, <laughs> this job. Anyway. Can't complain, guys. Can't complain. Life's still good, you know? So I'll see you guys soon enough. And we have one game left in the painful, painful season that many of us just want to forget about. But I am going to look at the comical side to this if we lose next game. I'm probably going to be giggling next video if we lose. Just beware and be prepared for that, okay? I won't be upset. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be laughing they finished 82 points. It's almost like can you guys be any worse? <laughs> like, you're not going to get a good pick, you know? <laughs> you know? And now they're even screwing up their odds by getting a point for their, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like I want to get that 5% crack at the first overall pick. And right now we're screwing that up even, guys. We're screwing that up. So, oh, Lord, this season, man, this season. All right, guys, you have a good night. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. I think I'm going to take out my... Uh, my little one, I left her locked out tonight because I just figured I'd come in here and chat for five, six minutes. I've dragged it longer, obviously. But hey, 
You know, I, I mean, I seen some hustle tonight. I seen, I seen a bit. I, I seen some hustle tonight in the guys. I seen another really good game by Lucan and the Nets. I was happy about. You know, there was a few good things there. There was, but you know, when you're paying guys like Cousins seven million and and seven point one, and you're paying Olafson four point seven or four point seven five, you've got. How much is that? Like twelve million, eleven point five million dollars tied up into two players this year, that combined for like twenty-one goals, and that's not good enough, guys. It's not good enough. So we got to get rid of, not Cousins, but we got to move Olafson or no, let him go. Just let him walk. That's that. Olafson this year was horrible, and uh, Cousins this year might have been even worse. You know, and guys, wasn't it fitting to cousin season? He turns it over for the game winner. <laughs> oh my God. You know, uh, like a horrible giveaway in our zone. Like, can cousins have any worse of a season? No, no, he'll bounce back next year, folks. He will bounce back next. He's not going to be like this. I'm not worried about the contract, to be honest. I think we gave him too much too soon. I know I got a, a lot of backlash from you guys thinking that uh, I was wrong, but I'm not like you. I don't believe that one year sh we, we give a whole monster contract. I don't believe in that. I don't. Because that that's how a contract backfires nine out of ten times. And nine out of ten times, the players had a career year. Look at poor Jersey with Timo Meyer. You know? Go look at that contract. That, that contract's... Horrible. It might, that's going to turn into the worst contract in hockey, I think, eventually, that one. That, you know, that, that was a horrible move by their GM over there, signing him to that money. Horrible move. But I think Cousins is a solid bet. He's young. He's young. He's already had a really solid season last year. I think he'll bounce back fine next year. I think he just needs to get his head right in the offseason and understand that it's a young mistake. You don't just come out and think you're just going to continue... You know, going like this, it doesn't work like that way, the league. The league study tapes. They, they check out your weaknesses. They find it out. And he, he was exposed by many teams this year. Many teams got him to cough up the puck. I don't know how many times has Dylan Cousins coughed up the puck this year, folks. I can go on and on about this. Like, there's a lot of things. You know what's going to be funny, too? Is if Paige doesn't get another goal. <laughs> if he doesn't get another goal. And I don't even know if Skinner will ever get another goal the rest of his career. <laughs> you know, the way things are going. So, Anyway, look, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling right now, guys. I'll see you soon. Have a great night.